Seven Practices of Effective Ministry is written by some of the great leaders of the Christian movement in America. Seven Practices of Effective Ministry. So if we're involved in church ministry in any way, we really should read this book and try to glean the principles that it presents. I am so tired of models and programs being presented like they meet the needs of my unique community and the ministry taking place here. It's exhausting. Seven Practices of Effective Ministry does not present a model or program, but it articulates practical actions to boost the impact and helpfulness of my ministry in my unique community. Therefore, it really resonates with me, my ministry, and what I need to do. Using the events of a baseball game when a pastor skipped a church meeting to attend, this book presents practices, not new programs for ministry. The seven practices are clarify the win, think steps, narrow the focus, teach less for more, listen to outsiders, replace yourself, and work on it. Practice number one, clarify the win. Define what is important at every level of the organization. That makes sense to me. Practice number two, think steps, not programs. Before you start anything, make sure it takes you where you need to go. Practice number three, narrow the focus. Do fewer things in order to make a greater impact. A greater impact. The fourth practice, Teach less for more. Say only what you need to say to the people who need to hear it. How would that change the way we preach and teach? Practice number five, listen to outsiders. Focus on who you're trying to reach, not who you're trying to keep. Who you're trying to keep. Practice number six. Replace yourself. Learn to hand off what you do to others. Practice number seven, work on it. Take time to evaluate your work and to celebrate your wins. If applied correctly, the practices should aid any church and leadership to protect the organization's simplicity. Move the people in one direction. Focus environments of meetings and ministry and effectively evaluate activities. Clarifying the win asks, how do we measure success? The four steps to clarifying the win. Sum up the win in a simple phrase. Keep the win as specific as possible. Restate the win frequently and creatively. Meet to clarify the win at every level. Number two, think steps, not programs. Think steps is summed up on page 89. If I can quote page 89, 89 says this, first determine where you want people to be, then figure out how you're get, going to get them there. That's doing ministry. Page 89 continues with the end in mind. That's doing ministry with the end in mind. How to create an effective step? That's the question. And the answer is make each step easy, obvious, and strategic. Number three, narrow the focus by simplifying. Creating environments as distinctive brands and increase relevance. Better connections, higher quality, stronger impact. Number four, teach less for more. Teach less for more by teaching by their needs. People learn what they need to know something. People learn when they need to know something. When. Four steps to teach less for more. Decide what you are going to say. Decide to say one thing at a time. Decide how you are going to say it. And then, and then say it over and over and over again. Number five, listen to outsiders is about listening to the lost. 
to understand how to reach them. Number six, replace yourself by training up leaders. Applaud those who applaud others. Teach what you know and hand it off. Three steps to handing it off, break it down, hand it off, let it go. Number seven, work on it processes the work on it processes the practices by dedicating time to evaluation, learning people's names, and evaluating the goals. The book presents a perfect balance between engaging storytelling and teachable principles. The storytelling is relatable, enjoyable, and Americana. You know, baseball, can't go wrong there. The principles are clear, practiced, explained, and applicable. While the book would not make for an easy, friendly, small group study, it is definitely aimed at the pastors, elders, and church leaders. I love the distinct rules and the thoughtful questions at the end of the chapters on the practices. If I had any small declaration of weaknesses, it relies on sound business ideas and marketplace common sense, but doesn't rely upon scripture or present a eschatology or the context of the book of Acts. However, it does sound and feel like the maxims of Proverbs. Seven Practices of Effective Ministry presents practical actions for impact and helpfulness in church ministry and its target audience is church leaders and decision makers. I recommend reading and studying the book while contemplating the end of chapter questions. Perhaps the church can gain some effectiveness by applying these seven practical ideas.